afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome to the international webinar on hr competency and capability building organized by iraj webinars in association with iraj on the behalf of entire organizing committee i'm isaac pera organizing secretary would like to welcome you all for this webinar ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen let me introduce our organization the motto behind this non profit association is to bridge the gap between students professors academics and industrialists from multidiscipline Apart from organizing various seminars, experts, and talks and conferences, we have various highly rated multidisciplinary journals in the field of science, engineering, technology, and management. Today, we are very much fortunate to have an eminent professor and expert who is joining this webinar as an expert speaker and guest. His name is Professor Nitin Deshmane. Presently, he is working as an dean academics, Mulshi Institute of Business Management, Pune, and he has done his PhD management. MBA in marketing and MTech in mechanical. Now, I'd like to welcome our, doc our professor, Dr. Nitin Deshmukh, to deliver the webinar. Okay, thank you to all the team members. Thank you for Iraj for arranging this session for the Mulshi Institute of Business Management Pune, and I welcome all the participant who, to whom we will discuss about competency building and capability building. So definitely, my journey starts since inception in the and development only. And competency, capability building is my passion, where I'm connecting with a lot of people in the industry, as well as the education sector, as well as the government sector. Where I found there's a scope for competency mapping and its implementations over there. We always talk about influencing people's abilities in the life, how they become more and more capable. See, it's not a vision that somebody is coming by birth, he's got all the competencies and he got developed and he become capable. No, it's not like that. Today's world is different. Our requirements are different. All the knowledge is at our fingertips, but definitely. Is it necessary that we should have or possess all the knowledge at a time? Well, what kind of knowledge we should have or one should have? That is a competence. Yeah, yeah. Now, we'll start with the simple thing. Yeah, you Am I audible to everybody? Devesh, please mute the Devesh, please mute. Um, yeah. We'll go with the philosophy of definition. Of the hell, yeah. We'll uh, go with the simple philosophy. Okay. What is competency? What is training? What is learning? What is education? Because many of the people right now, those who are present over here, they are from the education background, as well as some of them are students, some of the industrials. So first we'll learn what is the difference between that. Then we'll go for the capability building. See. I'm talking about competency. I already said it's not something by birth or you earn something like a character. No, no. Competency is a set of demonstrated characteristics or skills. They are the skills basically enable and improve the efficiency of performance of a job. Whatever job you do, you are a student or you're a person who is going to appear for the interview or you are a person who is working in the industry, anybody. Competency is very much important. Now, you can see the diagram also. There are some core competencies I'm discussing about where all the world is focused on this thing. That is interpersonal skill, personal skill, and business skill. All the, all the people are talking about these things only. Interpersonal leadership quality, motivator, negotiator. Okay, then personal skill, uh, then personal skills, you can say experience learning, communicative, consultative, business skill, accounting, economic. A lot of competencies are there, but do I need to have possess all the competencies? Is it necessary? Or what kind of competency a person should have in the industry or in his career to perform a task? It is necessary to understand. And here started the journey. Many of the researchers came, they had their theories, many of the research paper came. It is, it is the innovation of competency mapping and the uh, things a lot of research happen, but all the research said only one thing. Competency mapping or competency is directly proportional to their performances. Definitely, I will prove it. I have many examples in the industry I played with this uh, competency mapping over there. So definitely uh, we'll look into the matter more, okay? Now, 
I said that first we should understand that what is training and education. Because as you all are of majority of you right now in the education sector, some of you are from the training sector, some of us are in uh, learning the uh, learning phase also life. So training and education are the difference. In the education, we receive the knowledge of some. In a college, if you are appearing for the college or getting PhD or MBA degree, definitely we are getting some knowledge over there. But yeah, in MBA program, there's a program called SIP Summer Internship Program that is equivalent to training, where you go to check your ability in pursuit of, uh, you have to pursue your abilities, whether you are capable to do that job or whether you can understand that job requirements are like this. Now, develop the sense of reasoning and the judgment. Education, you will learn a lot of books, a lot of theories. You can defend. But training is very, very specific, very, very specific because it's directly related to your performance and productivity. Definitely. Methods of getting knowledge is in education. You can learn, you can write, you can know, okay, fine. But methods of skill development, because whatever you learn from the books, it is not exactly matching to the real world. Sometimes it happens. You learn about ethics, you learn about a lot of things, but in actual field, some different things are happening. It's all about skill set, how to manage uh, in critical situations. Likewise, then see, training always has a practical applications, okay? And education is a theoretical approach. If we understand this thing, training and education, see, very important factor over here. Up to 10th, 12th, and graduation, we are in the education only because our education system is designed like that only in India. I'm talking about India only right now, not other contents. In Asian countries, mostly I can say in Asian countries, mostly we are focused on education only. We are not focusing on training, but uh, thanks to the recent government, they have passed the bill for skill development, skill enhancement. Already we had, we had, but always remember one thing in the life, I know and I wish to know there are two things. First, I have a capability to do something. That is one thing. And I have interest to develop my capacity is another thing. This interest factor was not taken into accountability. But in the latter generation from past five years, all the competency mappings are always taking care of whether the person is interested in that particular skill sets. It happens some of the industry that a person at the age of 55, he is not at par to get a growth of different kinds of things in a, at par with the industry, but we cannot remove it. He has to be so in other departments sometimes. Now here comes a situation in this theory that he is capable, but he don't wish to work. This happens in many of the industry. This happens in many of the industry. I can see that. They are capable, but they don't want to wish to perform at that time. So in that case, what is required is to be taken care of by the management. That's why competency mapping is very much needed. Now I'm talking about the training and the education. Now we will go training and the learning. There are two other, other words now in the phase. We are always going about training, education, and learning, but I will clear the thought process. Training particular person is like I'm training somebody for a particular behavior, particular type of behavior that he has to put up a particular type of task. But learning is different. Okay, what is given from the task? He's doing that task repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And at one point after he's getting some experiential learning over there. He understand how to tackle the task over there. That's the biggest difference between training and learning. Training is instantaneous, but learning is something different over there. Training is a short term, but learning is a long term process. Every day you have to learn something. See, it's a simple example. Many of you, everybody of us now understand one thing that we learn the bicycle in the childhood. That training was given to us by our parents, by our friends, by neighbors or relatives, anybody. It happens. That training was given. But when you started climbing on the cycle, you're riding here and there, then you are making experiments in the life. You're leaving one hand in the air, then another hand in the air, two legs in the air, then you're, you're making a lot of stunts on the your bicycles. So that's the learning. Likewise, training is focused on immediate needs, but learning is career development. 
and training is focus on masses that they should understand this particular type of behavior of the process but when you come to learning is different it's a individual aspect that's why i say it's very much important that interest should be developed now the biggest difference between learning and education now that is also important you should understand what is the difference between learning and education <laughs> wow see i already said interest is required whether any student wish to learn or don't wish to learn in india or asian countries he has to be told from his childhood that you have to become a doctor whether his motivation is there or not he there it is not important but he is asked he should do that because somebody else is doing that that is called extrinsic motivation whether you wish to learn or you wish to do you do you wish to learn that thing but you have to still wish uh, learn that subject because it is compulsory by the education system that education learning is different learning is where you understand if i work in this way in particular way i will come to know about new things and new explorations over there it's a natural process learning is a natural process training is a deliberate process where teacher will come to you train you uh, so teacher will come he will give you the classes assignment blah blah thing will happen over there yes definitely but education is required without education you cannot go for training and without training you cannot go for the learning phase it's interdependent try to understand this do not say ki education or learning or comparing don't compare they are highly interdependent if you are not educated you cannot be trained if you are not trained you are not going to be in learning phase likewise i can say we all we all talk about attitude word attitude any activity which is repeated for longer duration of time with the same effect that becomes a natural habit means what something has been taught to you from childhood any good theory any philosophy or good ethics you practice you are trained by your parents first you are educated by your parent first this thing has to be done then you have been trained by your parent how to do it in later life you understand every day how should i behave in the society that is called learning so always remember when we are talking about the competency first try to understand the difference between training education and the learning once we are clear with this thing we'll move to next process yeah you can see here a chart is given actually i like this chart a lot okay i'll always see that this is a liminal learning process over there they have provided this uh, very beautiful uh, arrangements of the all the thought process like people pioneering influence and delivery you can go in the square the middle of the square you will find some performing through people performing through pioneer performing through influence and performing through delivery this activity you can see over here but he has mentioned what exactly will happen what exactly is we are looking for then it's adapting to changes learning agile conceptual learning forecasting engaging the people providing directions being interpersonal absolute work lot of the outputs are there but how they will happen if you go in proper way you understand in this way i will take one example when you talk about performing through people the people focus okay accommodating collaborating empathetic there are three words which are very very important in the competencies can you accommodate somebody means you are working with the size of 10 people size a new person has come after 7 years can you accommodate that second collaborative can you work together empathetic if that person doesn't know anything and he is a very new person are you going to tell him because maybe uh, your work will hamper over there if you are going to train him without the permission of hr then what exactly so people who is very much important this is one example we are talking about then inspirational driven hai big picture thinking then the outcome focus discipline a lot of things are there that's why i'm saying competency is one of the biggest domain where we can understand how we can build the capacity of the person the capable and make the cognition very much capable in the line timeline now types of competency in the industry or anywhere in the world is a generic one so very 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 simply beautiful word that is generic competency managerial competency computer literacy you can see over here process improvement competency technical and functional competency these are the five parameters we generally used to observe in any field any field i'm saying any field 
any field. Since inception, I'm working on this uh, this parameter. <laughs> Now, as I say, in types of competency, generic competency, manual competency, computer literacy, process improvement competency, and technical competency. I will show you how we do that in an actual world. One glimpse over here on the Excel sheet. And before going to that, how the Likert scale happen? That is, level one, two, three, four, five, we give to any Likert scale if anybody is rating himself or he's rated by other people, the boss, director, 180 degree, 270 degree, 360 degree competency mapping is there. So in the Likert scale, we can see uh, one is poor, two is basic, then uh, intermediate, three is intermediate, okay. Four is advanced and five is expert, fine, all right. We get the explanation for that also. Why we are saying that this is poor, why this is, this is basic, why this is intermediate, now, once we know this Likert scale on the five, now, already we have discussed that generic competency, manual computer literacy, okay, we'll go in depth now. Okay, I think we can see this Excel sheet uh, made over here. See, while designing the competency mapping capability process, we use the name of the person, well, position, name, position, designation, date of joining, number of days, his work over here in the company and organization, this, that person's location, actual and experience. This is the basic data we can see on the very left-hand corner over there. We can see this basic, the basic data is very much important. Once we receive this basic data, we can analyze the positioning of the person. That is, I have taken this HR model over here, head HR, assistant manager, senior executive, then executive, the four people are working. Many people may be working. I'm just taking a sample because that has to be figured over here. Now, when I'm talking about the competency, I think you can see over here, generic competency, manager competency, I talked to you, computer literacy, process improvement competency in the, all this blue, like you can see with the cursor over here, functional competency, technical competency. What happened over here, then we got several parameters to discuss over there. Parameters may change. Now I'm taking very few parameters so that this sheet should be uh, inclusive over here. I will give in depth how many parameters should be there to take the competence, to look at the competence in different way. Okay. In general competence, you can find the communication skill, interpersonal skill. Now, when I'm talking about interpersonal skill, etiquettes, mannerism, flexibility, positive attitude, integrity, honesty, Emotional intelligence very, very much important nowadays because yeah, I always say there's a two factor called uh, intrinsic and extrinsic factor of motivation. So emotional intelligence play a very, very important role over here. So what about what does emotional intelligence means? Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. These are very, very important factor. And definitely this factor will make you highly capable in the organization and people will work for you in a very different manner if you are having high emotional intelligence. Work management, that is called PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, that is planning, organizing, and productive work management, teamwork, stress management. These are the general, everybody should possess this kind of fact. Now, when I'm talking about the student development, Okay, I always focus that in uh, one of the program we have designed for the student called Corporate Finishing School, where we are highly focused on this point. Highly focused because see, this is a generic competency which is required by the industry. And this is a data sheet from the industry, live data sheet from the industry. The name of industry is not mentioned over here, apologize because we have to take the permission for that. And data cannot be disclosed with the name. Okay, fine, but there's no names, okay. Data is there only for the study purpose. Okay, fine. So communication skill, interpersonal skill. So what we are doing over here from past three years, we are trained the student on capability first parameter in the corporate finishing school for one month. That is communication, interpersonal skill, emotional intelligence, work management, teamwork, stress management. They are looking very, very small activity, but they are very must activity as a corporate leader in the industry. Yes, definitely. Now coming to the point called managerial competency. 
leadership, conflict management, motivator, mentoring, coaching. You can see over here also with the cursor. I'm taking the cursor over here. In manager competency, you can see very clearly leadership, conflict management, motivator, mentoring, coaching, man management. There's a very, very much important factor in the manager competency. Now, we can train somebody for that, but these competencies can be learned only when your interest is there. Try to understand. I cannot make a manager over there in the company. Few of them has an interest to be a manager. Leadership, conflict manager. These are the things you have to learn. This is experiential learning. Every time you will face different kind of situation, different kind of people or you can find. And it's one of the difficult time to take a decision in that case. So yeah, definitely, manager company is very much important. Then coming over to computer leaders. Now everybody knows over here nowadays, you go to the any organization, we look up, H look up, power, pivot chart, and so many names are there in the Excel sheet and the domain of the uh, word power excel okay there are many many things are coming emerging and one more thing is email drafting also yeah very much important whether my employee or my team member can draft a good mail legal mail in legal entities very very important so in computer literacy word power excel is important email drafting is important as well as any organization is working on erp system so definitely that person should be aware of, even you're going to the any college also. Nowadays, all the colleges are running remotely and you have got the access of data. Uh, so definitely you're working on ERP model only, nothing else. Coming to the process improvement competencies. Yeah, definitely. This is a very important factor. Very, very much important factor. When we're talking about the process improvement, when we say, and this is for the actually manufacturing plant where you are, where, this is common also. IS, Kaizen, Problem Solving Technique, AMS, OSHA. This is for manufacturing, but this is required for everybody. Even you're going for uh, automations, software industry also, you're going for pharmaceuticals, GMP. The basic things are even same. You have to follow the guidelines given by the government. That is safety guidelines, process guidelines. You have to follow. Five is necessary everywhere. So, whether that person is aware of that or not aware. If he is not aware of that, then training has to be given. Something is a problem. What is the problem? So now you can see where there's a person called head HR, okay? And he's, not, he's given N over here, not required. The quality is not required. How come the person in the rank of head HR will not have, will not required the quality called problem solving techniques? So it happens. We have to check properly, but if it is going for down the line, executive or senior executive, they are not supposed to be problem solver. They are there to give, they are there to follow the guidelines given by the assistant manager head HR. They have to follow the guidelines. Likewise, there's a, one word called functional competency. See, now every organization or every department has it got its own functional required. There are 10 to 15 workings so that we can access their KPI, KRA. So when I'm talking about this department called HR, the managing time office, licensing, personal records, welfare, legal matters, recruitment, these are the activities in the HR department. Now, who is competent in this activity? You can see the chart over where I did it in years. This is a blank you can see over here. Here is a blank. Again, it is a blank over here. The, a lot of things are there. Now, depend when we segregate the people like this, we have a database for training management. After that training, it will come the point called learning. There, these all people are educated. How come I said education is required? Why? See, education is a column over here that is required. Minimum qualification is required. Means you should have theoretical knowledge. I agree. I agree. Now. By this competency mapping, we are deciding on the scale of one to five whether training is required or not required. Okay. So this competency-based model, when the 2.5 in a scale you can see over here, the training is required for communication skill. I found this person is very poor in communication. Training is required. Training is required. So this is how we are working on competency model. That's why I'm saying 
when I was industry, I was working on this model for the company employees over there for their development and future processing, performance management, their organization development, other things. So this database is required. But when I came to the education sector, okay, I know what companies looking for exactly. Companies look for generic competency, you know, manager competency, company looking for computer literacy. So definitely, we also designed the programs over here for the student, first year and second year student. In first year, we are focused highly on the corporate leadership qualities. That is called attitude building program. In this attitude building program, we are focused on generic competencies only, as well as computer literacy, advanced Excel is required. PowerPoint is required. So we have focused on that also. In, see, I already say, your attitude is very important. And attitude is nothing but any activity which is repeated for longer duration of time with the same effect. That becomes your natural habit. Okay, that is attitude. Okay. And I already say, attitude can be taught. See, we are educated by our parent on certain ethics in our childhood. Then they trained us, don't do this in the society. We are educated by parent, then we are trained by the parent. Now, in the further life, we are always carrying that moral with us and we got experiential learning in that. That's why competency, first education, then training and then learning is important. That's why I'm saying when we are designing this capability, when we say about capability building, first competency is required. This is the thing which I'm doing on the Excel. But nowadays, we can have the support of the online ERP model. Some of them are free online also. You can go and check it. Okay. Definitely, I will share the links. Okay. So you can have the access for that also. Now, the skill best is a company which is providing you and one uh, database which is online available over there where you can understand how the competency model works exactly. Okay. Here, ability, desire, and the knowledge, three things are required. I always told you one thing. Before industrial uh, revolution, desire is not playing much role. Ability knowledge is required because mass production was there, a lot of things are happen. But after the 1990, the generation, the generation is changing. Every generation has its own, uh, own requirements. In 70, 80 to 90, People are working, bosses abuse you. Still people are working in the same company. They are not leaving the company for 15 years. It's not about loyalty. No, no, no. It's not about loyalty. They had a fear. If I lose my job, how should I take care of my family? So there's no question of loyalty over there. That is a question of survival. Once this generation is gone, then 90 generation come. Yeah. In 90 generation, their father already made the survival platform. They had a survival. Now they were talking about a lifestyle. Okay. They are talking about the good lifestyle. 90s, 2000. Nowadays, the generation Z has, uh, generation Z, generation N, Z is cream. They have everything. They have food, safety, security, everything. Now they are thinking. If their desire is to dare, they will work. There is no compulsion. That's why in this module, you can find carefully looking at that. Ability is definitely, in my model, what I say, it's 10 years ago, we are talking about the ability and the knowledge. But desire was not there included. But now in this model, what we found over here, desire is so important. I will show you the slides properly, how I'm talking about that thing and how it looked like exactly, okay? Now, coming to the point, in this process of skill-based module, what we do over here is process of identification skill set. See, person means you are there, okay? Your role is important, as I say, in the competency mapping also in Excel sheet, your role is important. Who are you? Senior executive, executive, head HR, GM, VP, who you are. Then what are the skills category? Once you know everything, then process identification skills. That is tracking of tracking the skills against the role. 
which role you are playing then skill based skills categories categories role role of the people which role you are given to the people that matters a lot now we have to define the skill sets according to that i will show you how we are doing that in the next slide so don't worry then what we do is a skill gap identification in the competency mapping we are doing the same thing skill gap identification what, what is the current level what is targeted and what we can improvise see a person is very good in communication with the 55% of background that is the current skill set he is having as per the 360 feedback system then uh, skill gap was of 20% we are looking for 70% he can be trained for 85% also theoretical maximum value so we have to define when we are having a training plan what is skill gap identification once we know the skill gap identification we can plan their trainings not the learning learning is a very far far away process learning is different we can plan set of instruction for them first now just you can see over here nowadays this is a online mode i can see i am showing the two generations over here one we are working with the excel in that way now this is a new generation where the free modules are available for you without payment also and this is see what is saying they are saying the same thing but they are giving more illustration see you can see general computer use adobe adobe photoshop audio editing software basic computing troubleshooting you can see the skill level and the interest level two factors over here you can see the skill level and interest level see you can here can see skill very low very low interest very low very high you have two skills so interest should be required if that person is not interested then how you are going to train that person if it is required but it is not, he is not interested then raise a question it raise a differently question now coming to the point where i can you can see 1 2 3 for the scales are there sample 1 sample 2 now you can see the scale over here where the general computer use is there adobe illustrator adobe photoshop adobe editing basic computer troubleshooting email communication file management microsoft office personal computer security presentation creation spreadsheet these are the required skill sets in the competency the required skill sets in the competency that's why i say the sample 1 sample 1 sample 2 these the people we are identifying the difference between them we can correlate what kind of person what kind of knowledge over there now coming to learning and development adult learning principle assessment and evaluation assessment and design blended learning career dollar so you can see the skill sets over here 1 2 3 4 is a like a skill you are given very low basic capability competent developed skills highly skilled means expert but interest level you have to see whether that person is interested or not interested you can see there are variations happening he is interested but skill level is 4 means there is a scope for training over there there is scope for training over there now These are the parameters we are looking for L and D. I already showed you in Excel sheet. I minimize all this, uh, all the points over there. I keep very minimal points over there. But here we can understand adult learning process in L and D, assessment evaluation, assessment design. This is for HR domain actually. I'm talking about HR domain. Likewise, we got marketing domain, finance domain, accounting domain, lot others domain. Manufacturing they are different. R and D there is a different. So domain will this this will change according to domain. executive coaching e learning group learning instructional design all these parameters you can see over here and how many people are available in the company sample 1 sample 5 you can see over here now people's leadership and the management the particular person in high rank also you can see the coaching and mentoring is given 5 on 5 means he is expert he is in, already involved in the coaching and mentoring but coaching for the performance 
he is coaching and mentor but for, when it comes to performance his skill set is 4 not 5 he is himself rating himself 4 not 5 means training can be given to this person so if you are going for this then we can see people's leadership management i got three people in the company over here their ratings are given yellow uh, uh, white green the different people are there coaching and mentoring coaching for the performance conflict prevention decision making delegation employee performance management leading change motivation inspiration talent management and team building these are the factors we are focusing for a level of a person over there so i found three person in the company with the same quality over there they are people leadership management now this is called personal and interpersonal now very important factor i said it's generic basically active listening adaptability business acumen collaboration again you are rating yourself properly when you are giving this kind of ratings you can understand what kind of skill sets i'm having and what kind of level of interest is in me within me we we'll see always remember when we talk about learnability miss ability to learn something you should have intrinsic factor that is called motivation that yes i i have an interest to learn something then and then you are going to learn something i go to real world active listening adaptive there are the four people in the organization where i am comparing business acumen collaboration communication and these all people are all the same level and these ratings are given by themselves the first rating the second rating the fourth rating then it come back again for the call for the training so personal see collaboration communication conflict resolution emotional intelligence empathy ethics goal setting negotiation networking relationship networking is very important without networking nowadays it is very difficult to work network is important relationship building so see, i already told you i am doing this experiments on many people in the industry and doing the experiment for the education sector also private sector also in education sector already said to that two programs which you design for the student capability program, the program uh, that is corporate finishing school and your capacity building program we always focus that what industry is looking for is a person who has got basic acumen to become a corporate leader or a manager over there when it come over here, they don't they don't need to train that candidate for particular domain that candidate is already trained college only for that skill sets that care we are taking for that now i'm saying again competency and the capability building of this topic which i'm discussing with you i'm always talking that how these things are related to each other and how they are practically can be done senior management when i'm talking about the skills of senior that see corporate governance crisis management you can see over here and cross functional management delegation and empowerment you can see over here with the things now if you go for the uh, senior management corporate governance these are the things which i am looking for project sponsorship strategic planning organization development organization change management global mindset i got three people in the samples over here we can understand they got the skill sets but now you see one is called for training one is called for the training okay one is called for the training now sometime it happens that while giving the competency rating person can make a mistake see it's not see a person is a senior level of a level of a gm hr and he is saying i don't know corporate governance person in range of vp is saying i don't know corporate governance i don't know crisis management this cannot be happen or i don't have global mindset maybe happen this might be a reason because he is working the he is always working in the indian industry he is not working in mnc so there might be a process of mindset that he is not having the global mindset over there might be might be but when it comes to corporate governance definitely the range of vp and hr everybody should know and he is aware of that but still it is saying one miss that thing has to begin check whether that rating was given in a proper manner so coming to the point we are discussing on one thing only we are discussing on one thing that is called competency 
mapping and the capability building. In my experience, what I found that industry sector like finance, HR, any domain we are discussing actually, manufacturing, all these people are looking for certain kind of skill sets, certain kind of skill sets. I work with more than 70 industries regarding competency mapping and deliver them good models over the suggestions over there as a consultant. I always found that all the entrepreneurs are looking for the results, but they are not ready to invest the time of employees in the trainings. And that is the biggest hurdle nowadays in the industry we can find. But that was 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10, 7 years ago. After the corona, everybody feels that training is very much important because suddenly drastic change was there. Drastic, sudden drastic, everything comes on hold. And it's like that you have to perform this no option. If you're sitting at home, you can work from home and you, can, you have to perform this no option. From where this video conferences came in picture, we can understand each other, we can exchange the thought process with the people very easily. Likewise, when I'm working with the organization manufacturing industry, we are facing some issues over there in quality department. There's a supervisor, there's a worker, and there's an assistant manager, and there's a manager. There are the four levels over there. We hire a manager from the MNC who has a very good skill sets. But the question is whether my assistant manager can deliver that message to the workers. Again, it comes to the question of communication. Very simple issue of communication. Manager has strictly given the instruction to the assistant manager, this performance has to be done in this way. But this was not been trained to the employee. And a big consignment of Two CR was returned from the export. For that company, two CR is nothing but owner taking it in the right direction. They ask all the training department, please come over here. How this happens? How this happens? Why the training was not given? Why the training is not called? That's why in all the organization, HR department has a very big responsibility that they should be aware of the skill sets of the employee. Even while hiring the employee, we had an interview process where we understand several capabilities also. And this is a task of HR to understand we are looking for certain characteristic. Don't look at his, always, every time you're looking at the experience and degree and a lot of things are different, we have to look at it. I agree, fully agree with that also. But whether that person has capability, that is important. Many of the capable people are rejected in the industry because they don't have the degree certificate or the qualification proper. Many of the, this, it happens in India. That's why the government of India recognized that and they said we should have a new education policy where we are highly focused on the skill set development. Definitely we are educating. Education is required. Everybody agree. But at the same timeline, we have to train the people for the right activity, right? That is called capability building. Again, it comes, it is a part of competency mapping. Yes, definitely. I'm making this experiment, social experiment, the student also so many times in the my organization also. One of the organizations I'm serving, we are facing the issues of catering the industry needs. Industry we are looking for the skilled corporate leaders and Deliberately, we are failing in doing that. And what we found over there, we are placing everybody, 100% placement, but it taking some lot of time and many pressure over there. During that period, we decided with the management, very highly visionary management, and we decided for competency mapping. That is called, we understand where these candidates are standing right now. That is called TNI, training and identifications were done with the competency mapping. And what we found over there, very, very basic thing. You cannot imagine also that the thing was very simple. 
to whom I am thinking he's a corporate leader. We are trained by the so many people and by our by one of our talented people by us, our team members. But the question is whether that student is interested in learning that parameters. Whether that student is nobody understand this fact that if somebody is not interested, try to understand why he's not interested. Try to create that person interest to develop that competency. Explain him the importance of competency. Why that competency is required? Definitely, we fail to do that. We fail to do that. Deliberately fail to do that. And here's the issue that all the students or the so-called future cop leaders, they are facing an issue called art of storytelling. The biggest hurdle. See, since childhood, we are all our experienced people. We are educated by society. We are educated by neighbors, colleagues, books, teachers. We clear 10, 12, graduation. We study a lot and lot and lot and lot. We got everything in our brain. Wow, very good, really good thing. But now everybody know in the child since childhood, we are playing some games to enhance our memory or to become a very influential person or the strategic person. We play a game since our childhood, in the childhood only. The one, two, three, four numbers were given on the paper. You have to draw the line from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, something like that. And once you complete that lines, you will find it's a kite, it's a house, it's a horse, it's a cat, it's a butterfly, anything, any dimensions over there. Likewise, our brain is storing all the information. But how to deliver that information is very, very important. Because in the interview, basically interview the kind of happening in the country also, they are deciding your future in 10 minutes or five minutes only. Five minutes of interview, uh, you are decided whether the right candidate or wrong candidate in five minutes. How can somebody define that is the right candidate or wrong candidate in five minutes only? It's impossible, merely impossible. We have to go with the proper rounds over there. We should understand what kind of competency is having, what is the competency we are looking, whether we have that kind of training program, where can, can we train there? Nobody thinks about that. We always think about, yes, we are the great, we'll do that, and he will do that. No, this will not happen. In competency and capability building, you should understand interest is very, very important. So, Many of the people ask me that, sir, you are working on a Dean Academics position and how come you are so friendly with your student? You give them time, you talk to them, it's a schedule, busy schedule. You prepare a cup of coffee there for them, you give them chocolates, you discuss with them, you, are, you, are, you know everything about their families, you know about the problems, the psychological issues they're having, facing over here in the campus. See, try to remember to build a trust to build the interest of the candidate in capability building program, first you need to win his trust. What is the program we are designed for them? They should not be resistant to that. If they're resisting, then it will hamper their career. That is called, if they're in uh, education sector, they're looking for the PPOs or they're looking for the job and the placement and everything, but in their company, they are looking for promotions. They are looking for shifting, relocations. A lot of things are switch over of the sectors. A lot of things happen. So competency is one thing which is changing in the timelines and dimensions. We are improvising ourselves every day. It is not required a person who is working in the marketing cannot go to the HR. Or a person who is working in HR cannot go to marketing or finance. Anybody can change his dimension with the timelines. Only thing. I always say that you should have interest in that. Sometimes it happens. Mere dost ne marketing liye, maybe marketing. That is a statement I received to hear from the people. 
uh, see my friend is taking market that's I'll go for the marketing but whether he's going to solve the problem no marketing is his interest your interest is not the marketing but after working one year you realize that yeah I think marketing is not my interest or sales is not my domain so what is your domain I think so I should go to the creative media I should go to the HR domain see it happened some people realize earlier that we are competent in this field and some people take some time to understand their likings doesn't make a big difference of failure there is no failure it's only a point of time where we understand that this is my liking and this is how should i perform that's why i'm saying competency mapping is something where interest has to be taken care interest of the candidate interest of the employee has to be taken care and understand properly and accordingly the action should be taken this is called competency based capability building program module now um, i will request everybody that if you have any questions on the competency capability building i am ready to answer those question with my experience Definitely, I will uh, try to answer you the best. I'm waiting for your questions. Yes, dear team, uh, do you wish to ask me any questions on the competency, capability building, how to develop, or how uh, we are thinking about the corporate finishing schools or individual capacity building sessions, how we proceed for that, how this will help the student to develop their career? Do you have any questions on that? Okay, I think one chart is there. I will see, look into the map. Okay, fine. Let's go there. Okay, fine. I will explain you about this corporate finishing school and other themes also in a little bit in a while in a minute or two i can explain you the output of this is very very interesting first when they started implementing this corporate finishing school and uh, into a capacity building session earlier we are facing very uh, drastic issues in the placements of the student or the corporate leader as a corporate leader we got a peak season in september to december and we should at least place 50% of the student over there. But we found we could not attempt and we could not reach to that level also earlier before this cap competency and capability building program happens. Now, the record says now after starting this CFS and ICB program, our 80%, 88%, 85% placement is completed before December. And we got another session called January, February, March for the placement. So definitely, this is a very, yeah, I got one student from this, uh, Suraj Gupta that his, his personal development is a part of competency. Yes, personal development is a generic competency. I will go to the slide over there so where you can understand properly. Personality traits that etiquettes, mannerism, flexibility. You can go with this cursor where you can find that etiquettes, mannerism, flexibility, positive attitude, integrity, or yeah. This is the personality traits that is personality development, groomings of a person. There are two types of grooming that is external grooming that I'm looking at my dress and everything. Okay, that's a grooming. And one is personal development. We're thinking about the ethics, etiquettes, mannerism, relationship building, conflict management. 
integrity, honesty. Yes, they are compulsory part. The, this slide I'm showing to you is actual slide of a, one of the MNC, topmost MNC in India. Okay. This is actual, they're working on this slide. Uh, they're working. Now they've got LMS with them. This, this slide is converted into the LMS software. Miss, all the records will be developed automatically. You don't need to put a VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP formulas over there. Don't need to do that nowadays. But for understanding purpose, I keep this sheet like this only where you can understand. Yeah, personality development is very much important part of competency. And see, per see when you are in 10th, you are a different person. When you are 12th, you are a different person. When you graduate, you are a different person. In industry, when you will change your position from one place to another place, that is called executive, senior executive, management, VP, directors, CHRO, MD. Everywhere you will find there is a change in a person characteristic. As a human being, you will remain the same, but definitely some things will change, and that is required change. Definitely, personal development is a part of competency mapping. Yes, we have to think about that. Definitely. Good question, Suraj. Thank you. Any more questions? Gaurav. Gaurav is saying how one can foster a culture of continuous learning and the role of discipline in capability building. Wow, really good one. I already said, when we talk about the culture, okay, it is the interest of the person to understand that this competency I should possess and because of this competency, they will assist me to complete that task or the job in the finest way. Now, how one can foster the culture of continuous learning? See, again, I will tell you when it, the word you use continuous learning is very important. For learning, first education required, after education, training is required. After that, it's a continual learning. Just like I give an example. When your father or your relative or a friend teaches you or trained you or guided you initial days how to ride on bicycles. That is called training. What is continuous learning? When the Gauro went on the field, on the street, he left his one hand, second hand, then he is leaving the side bicycle, he's making stunts on that. That is his continuous learning. Role of discipline in the capability building. When you talk about the role of discipline capability building, it's very, very simple. I will give an example for this role of discipline. When you talk about discipline, see, I'm working in a factory, okay? 10 people are working on a site and one person is not following the guidelines and he's keeping material on the floor. Without the guidelines, he cannot keep that material on the floor. And accidentally it happens, he himself fall because of that material. Because he forget the material is not lying on the floor. But as per the guidelines, he should not keep in the gangway, but he kept in gangway. So these are the things. That's why discipline is very important everywhere. That's why I'll be always have to check the 9 a.m. to 9 uh, 8 a.m. the duty time, duty cycles are in the, any company. There's a discipline over there. Definitely, discipline is required. I agree, fully agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Puni say how to perform well in function competency. Okay. Now, see, Puneet. Uh, it, again, I will tell you the functional competency. I'm saying that every department got its own functional competency. Here I'm mentioning functional competency of HR only. If you belong to the finance, if you belong to the marketing, then this functional competency will change. And just like this thing, now you got a tier system, your boss is there manager, assistant manager, and you are there. Your boss knows how to negotiate well, but team doesn't know. Now boss is saying the executive person go to the field and negotiate with them. Definitely that boy will go to the person, distributor or any company, B2B or B2C. He'll go to that place. 
he will inform but he cannot communicate well because he don't know how to negotiate i will tell you today's example one person called me in the morning and said sir we got a program for the student for the media we have a digital marketing will teach them will give a certificate we got a very very senior fellow from the tate talk and he will teach them something blah 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 okay lot many things i said okay drop me a mail i will see he says sir there are charges for that so i say that boy is a intern actually <laughs> okay he is not trained well he is not trained in functional competency i suppose see what happened I, in the billing i will deduct your 10% because you don't have gst now he didn't understand what he say i don't so we don't have the gst it means that person is giving his own pan card if he is giving his own pan card then we will deduct the 10% deduction so it will be there out of what the money he is saying to me so he didn't understand that so that's what i'm saying the boy is working in marketing but he is not understanding the negotiation skill or the bargaining skills are not there he doesn't understand that that's why functional competencies are very very much important to be trained that's why in induction training all the companies make sure that this kind of training should be included now i again say uh, functional competencies will grow in the timeline see the punit is working for our organization he started dealing with two cr project earlier stage when he is joined after two years he got a chance to work with 10 cr 15 cr project after four years he has asked for working for 100 cr project miss what when this pricing is increasing responsibility is increasing paperwork is increasing you have to be more and more and more concentrated on that that's why functional competencies are very very much important yes punit thank you any more questions thank you punit thank you team thank you professor for sharing your valuable time and for joining this webinar definitely we have of organizing committee irs webinars now i would like to thank all our sponsors and coordinators i like to thank all our president we will happy to hear your comments and compliments and suggestion at our facebook and twitter page this video will available shortly in our youtube channel kindly subscribe our official youtube channel and con irs conferences and seminars for all past and upcoming webinars and expect lect expect lect lectures thank you all see you in another webinar soon Thank you.